Hi, welcome to this look at the October weather prospects. October, a mixed month. I think many people consider it to be one where we have dry periods and wet periods interspersed with each other and fairly mild conditions. But some years it brings really notable conditions. For example, the Great Storm in 1987. And then in 2008, these photographs are ones which I took. On the left, that's my garden in Burke Hampstead, which is uh, about 25 miles northwest of central London in the Chilterns. That was taken on the evening of the 28th and it was snowing quite heavily. We ended up with about four or five centimetres. The picture on the right is one that I took the next day. I had to travel into uh, central London and that's actually a view in Regent's Park. There was less snow there, but I think it looks quite impressive because in the background you can see the trees are still showing their autumn colours and in the foreground the snow is clearly visible. So, as I say, October can bring very notable weather indeed. However, I think most people probably would see this as a more typical scene, leaves tumbling down, the wet roads, the overcast skies fairly gloomy conditions as we head through the month and the days get shorter and shorter. So what is it looking like this year? I think at the outset I'll say there is, in my view, the potential for some significant differences to develop. I think it's looking quite interesting. So let me begin by taking a look at the first week or so of the month. So we're beginning here on uh, Friday, October the 1st. There's an Atlantic flow right across the UK, bringing showery conditions, low pressure there centred to the northwest close to Iceland. In the short term, it remains unsettled, and through Saturday there, Saturday the 2nd, it could really be quite unpleasant across much of England and Wales with heavy outbreaks of rain spreading eastwards, strong winds on the southern flank of that area of low pressure, so in southern England, perhaps eastern England there for a time. Not very nice. That clears away to leave more showery conditions, but the unsettled theme continues through the following days. Another area of low pressure there pushes eastwards, bringing longer spells of rain. However, by about Thursday the 7th, Friday the 8th, things are beginning to change on this animation. High pressures having more influence now in southern and central Britain, so it's looking drier there. Increasingly, the unsettled weather is becoming focused on the north and the west. I'll just take a look at a couple of the jet stream charts to try and explain that in a little bit more detail. This one's for Monday the 4th of October. What we can see here is a dip in jet stream with the UK on its northern uh, side, its cooler side, low pressure there in the ascendancy. But moving forward to Friday the 8th, this is high pressure building over southern and central regions, jet streams starting to be uh, pushed northwestward, so hence the unsettled weather becoming increasingly focused on northwestern parts of the UK. I just thought it would be quite interesting at this point to take a look at the northern hemisphere profile for Friday the 8th of October, because uh, because a lot of the deterministic models are in broad agreement, so I'm not going to step through them individually on this presentation. But what we've got here is the European model um, on the right and the GFS on the left. Both charts are showing the Northern Hemisphere view for Friday, October the 8th. I've circled the UK and they both show yellow shading over most of the UK, uh, indicating rather warm upper level there. So these charts are both for the um, 850 HPA level, so about 1500 meters or so above sea level. So rather warm conditions across the, rather warm upper level there at least, across southern and central Britain there, with high pressure becoming more influential. The other thing I just wanted to point out here was the situation across North America. I think it's quite interesting. It's, I know it's quite difficult on these charts to, to, to make out the land masses, but North America is essentially in the blue boxes on the left of both of these charts. And it, it looks to me as though there's significant anomalous warmth developing there, at least again at the upper level. So it could well be the case that 
much of North America. There will be, of course, big variations regionally because it's such such a large area. But it looks as it looks at the moment as though much of the US could be experiencing quite a lot of mild or warm weather going through October. Whether or not that will have any significance in the longer term is very much open to debate, of course. I think just before I move away from these charts, the other thing I'll mention is that there are signs at the moment that Siberian snow cover is building more rapidly than was the case last year, and a correlation is believed to exist between the extent of Siberian snow cover and the chance of cold weather in the UK and Western Europe during the winter months. So those things possibly just worth keeping an eye on as we head through the rest of the autumn. Coming back though to the first week of October, and as I say, it's an unsettled start, then reasonably good agreement between the different computer models for high pressure to begin influencing things later on in southern and maybe central Britain. So what about the second week of the forecast period? Well, from here onwards, it's all about trends and probabilities, not specifics. Therefore, it's looking at the ensemble data. I'll start with a 16-day GEFS plot for London and the South East. Across the top here are forecast upper air temperatures. Thick black line is the 30-year average. So at the start of the second week, most of the runs are above it. As we go forward, there's quite a big spread developing there, as is usually the case. But averaging out all of the runs, the thick purple line there being the ensemble mean, it suggests that the likely picture is for upper air temperatures to be close to or above the, at least a little bit above 30 year norm for the majority of the time. Rainfall across the bottom, well, there are some rain spikes continuing to appear, but all in all, it looks like a relatively dry picture. I think this would be suggesting that high pressure would continue to have a good deal of influence through the second week, at least in the south. Going up to the northwest to see what's happening there, Glasgow. What we see is a pair of temperatures there at the start of the second week are also above the 30 year norm. But through the rest of the period, I would describe it as a very average picture, really. No, some runs are above, some are below. Like there's, there's, there's more of a signal here for it to be a little bit cooler relative to the average from what was on the London chart, but it's not, not notable. Bigger difference is probably again in terms of rainfall risk. There are more spikes continuing to appear through the second week there, suggesting a wetter picture. So again, as has been the case quite a lot recently, it's a fairly typical pattern being suggested, driest in the southeast, wettest in the northwest. Just to take a look at the mean surface level pressure data table for York to see if there's more support for that relatively higher pressure in the southern half of Britain, York being fairly central of course. What we see there is going into the second week, there's a lot of yellows in these columns, so it's a predominant colour, that's 1011 to 1025 millibars. There's also some orange there, that's higher pressure, 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. But later on, more greens appear in the columns. That's a lower, lower category, 996 to 1,010 millibars. So all in all, it's, it's, it's reasonably not that far from the average. I would suggest higher pressure possibly just having the upper hand here over lower pressure. This therefore being York, as I said, relatively central location. And it again fits in with that pattern, I think, of it being wetter further northwestwards with low pressure in the Atlantic continuing to be more influential in northwestern parts of the UK. Therefore, the first half of the month is looking very mixed. It's an unsettled start with low pressure dominating across all parts of the UK. But later on, there's a signal for high pressure to build over southern and maybe central regions. So the risk of rain becomes increasingly confined to the north and particularly the northwest of the UK. But what about the second half of the month? Well, some people would argue that this is akin to looking over the event horizon. Nonetheless, I'll uh, try and identify the trends and the probabilities of general direction of travel, which the ensemble data is currently suggesting. Beginning with this uh, pressure anomaly forecast chart for week three, that's beginning the 14th of October. So the, the chart is 
averaging out all the pressure forecasts from all of the runs in the GEFS for the week in its entirety, and then comparing them to the 30-year average. And what we can see is that the yellows to the west of UK are showing a positive anomaly. As we head eastwards, that weakens, and by the time we move up into Scandinavia, there's light blue shading there, suggesting a slight negative anomaly. So the indication here is for pressure to be a little bit higher than usual to the west, perhaps ever so slightly lower there to the east, the northeast. Taken in isolation, this chart to me doesn't really suggest a, that much of interest, but I think it's worth looking at it in the context of the following week, so week four. Therefore, this one begins from the 21st of October. Now, things are starting to show more shape. The positive anomaly is much stronger to the west and to the north of the UK. Negative anomaly beginning to show to the southeast. Jump forward another seven days. And by this time, things really are fairly well defined. There's a significant negative anomaly to the south, a strong positive anomaly there to the north and to the northeast. Taking those three weeks together, possibly, it's as I always say, it's, it's very easy to read far too much into these charts, particularly when looking this far ahead. But if I had to hazard what they're showing, hazard a guess as to what they're going towards, I think it would possibly be for high pressure to be migrating northwards through this period. That would increase the chance of cool northeasterly or perhaps easterly winds, northerly winds maybe, especially over the southern half of Britain. The north there perhaps being close to the area of high pressure would be having quieter conditions, so a lot of dry weather there, perhaps showery further south and in the east. Just to look at the 850 HPA temperature anomaly charts, again, these, these are anomalies on a weekly basis, so we're jumping back here to week three, that's beginning the 14th of October. There isn't really a strong anomaly at all here over the UK, just a weekly negative one over East Anglia there, the southeast, also just to the northwest, but generally it's very close to the 30-year norm. Jumping forwards another week, what we see then is that, again, very close to the 30-year norm, a slight positive anomaly here in the northwest, possibly close to the area of high pressure. And then week five, it's the, uh, the negative anomaly there over much of Western Europe, Southeast England, East Anglia, Southern England generally. As you head northwards, that anomaly fades. But, so again, possibly because that's we're moving closer to the area of high pressure. I think, therefore, the, the, the uh, pressure anomaly charts and the 850 HPA temperature anomaly charts do fit together reasonably well and are consistent with that general pattern which I've suggested. Looking at specific locations during this period, here's the 35-day 2 meter temperature plot for London, so 2 meter temperatures of what we actually experienced down, down at the surface. The thick black line there is the, the 30 year norm, and I think it looks like the, the red line here is the ensemble mean. It's, it's a sawtooth pattern because it's showing temperatures increasing during the days, dropping through the nights, increasing and repeating. But all in all, there is, they look, they look like they are close to average for much of a period, perhaps dipping below the average later on there towards the end of October. Again, that's reasonably consistent, I think, with the pattern which I'm suggesting. Looking at Glasgow, it's a similar story there. Later on, the temperatures are dipping below the 30-year norm. How can that be since the upper air temperatures in the northwest were actually very close to the 30 year norm? There wasn't an anomaly there, if you remember the anomaly, the negative anomaly was largely focused on East Anglia and the south. Well, this could be to do with the fact that we're getting cooler nights into the equation. High pressure being dominant further north would allow temperatures to dip significantly during the nights and increase in risk of frost. 
and they might struggle therefore to recover during the days as well even even if the upper level uh, temperatures are warmer are higher than they are in southern England. Therefore taking these charts together I think the suggestion is for there to be quite a lot of dry weather through the second half of October. Initially the greatest risk of rain is in the northwest but that transfers southwards as high pressure builds northwards. Temperatures probably close to or a little bit above the average early on but they dip later on and it could become quite chilly. In fact the chance of frost and fog being widespread towards the end of the month may well be significantly higher than it has been during several recent Octobers. So to summarise the month as a whole, week one unsettled, wet and windy spells in all regions but later on it could start to turn drier in the south. Temperatures often close to or slightly below the average. Week two it remains unsettled in the north but southern and central regions probably have a good deal of dry periods. Temperatures close to the average and in the south it could become quite warm on some days. Rest of the month forecast confidence of course is very very low but the signal is for it to be dry of an average for much of a period although the risk of rain may increase in the south later on. Temperatures close to average maybe a little bit above early on but they dip later and that leads to an increased frost and fog risk relative to the norm. So that's the month. I think it's a very very mixed bag indeed this year. Obviously this is just the guidance from the computer model data at the present time and things could change quickly and dramatically. Nonetheless I hope you have found this video interesting and useful. If you have then please as usual hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching now. Bye.